So last time we talked a lot about stress. We derived the, the Cauchy stress equation, which uh, sort of made it self-evident that stress is actually a tensor, or we're going to treat it like this in this class, like as if it's a three by three matrix. Uh, so if you recall, the, the stress tensor has nine components. When we label them like this, the first subscript refers to what? Face. The face of our little stress cube. The second subscript is the component of the vector emanating from that face, right? Um, in mechanics, like in, in uh, 319, you probably used sigma for stress, right? It's sort of the, the common symbol. Um, in this class, we're going to use sigma later for something called effective stress. For the stress tensor itself, we're just going to use S, okay? And this is to follow Zoback's book and the notation he use, uses. It, it doesn't really matter what we call it, right? It's just a, just a label. <laughs> but uh, for now, the stress tensor will be uh, always S. And we're not going to go through the derivation, but due to conservation of angular momentum, the stress tensor we'll use in this class, which is technically the Cauchy stress, and remember we, you know, we drive to this Cauchy stress equation, so you, you can remember that the Cauchy stress is symmetric, right? So therefore you can replace uh, the terms in the lower half by the terms in the upper half because it's a symmetric tensor. It's transpose is its, uh, the, the, the tensor is its transpose. They're equal, they're equal to one another. Right? So like any matrix, again, we're going to treat it like a matrix. Like any matrix, we can diagonalize the stress tensor with its eigenvectors. So if we, if we have the stress tensor S and we know a matrix of its eigenvectors Q, we can use this equation to diagonalize the stresses. And a lot of times, it's these diagonal stresses, which are also known as, if that Q is the eigenvectors, what are the, what's the diagonal matrix that's, these are the, these are the eigenvalues of the stress tensor, right? And so another word for those will be, in this class, we'll call them the principal stresses. And the eigenvectors are the principal directions. Okay. And we'll always label, we'll, when we write the stress tensor like that, we'll always order them such that the largest principal stress is first and then the second principal stress. So we'll order them like this, going from the largest first to the, to the smallest. And remember, the columns of Q, the columns of the eigenvector matrix, or in this case, the principal directions, correspond with each of these eigenvalues, right? So the first column that corresponds to the largest is, will be the eigenvector or the principal direction that corresponds to the largest principal stress. The second column will be the principal direction that corresponds to the middle principal stress, okay? And so on, and, and so that's just written out what I just said. So these vectors, remember, are column vectors. So each of these have three components themselves. And they're in a column, and that gives you a matrix. So let's go ahead and work an example of solving for the principal directions, uh, principal stresses and directions. So when we were Learning about linear algebra, we did a two by two. This is really no different. It's a, just a three by three. So our stress tensor matrix was given as this. And so we want to solve for the eigenvalues of that matrix. What equation do we solve? No, that's a good guess if, uh, you know, 
before the end of this class, we'll work on Newton's second law. Um, remember, I can guarantee you there's going to be a question on the exam about eigenvectors and values, right? So you've got to remember this equation. Uh, remember, it's we solve the determinant of a minus lambda i, right? Where a is the matrix that we're interested in solving for the eigenvalues of. Right? So this, in this case, it's s. Right? You just replace a with s. So we're looking for the determinant of s minus lambda i, i is equal to zero. Right? The lambdas that satisfy that equation. And so uh, that's the determinant of this guy equal to zero. Evaluates to one minus lambda of zero, zero. So now we have to actually find the determinant of that. And remember. I like to use this little graphical tool, so I'm going to like take this term and cross out those, and then take the determinant of that, right? And the determinant of that, I just use the x method, okay? And then there's, you know, then I would have to go to the next one and the next one, but and there's a reason I picked this problem because it's easy, is because the next two entries are zero and zero, right? So you're just going to have zero multiplying a determinant and zero multiplying a determinant, so we don't have to do that. So we only have to work on the first one here, which is going to be 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda squared minus 1, plus 1, right? Or minus 1, right? Because it's, uh, it's this times that minus that times that. That times that is 1. So it turns out that uh, this is this is easily factorable, and if you work it out, you get that. And so therefore, the eigenvalues are you know, one, two, three. There's three eigenvalues. In order, they are four, two. One. Okay. Um, so those are our eigenvalues. Let's look at the case where lambda equals four. Let's solve for that eigenvector, right? So the, the eigenvector is uh, the vector v that satisfies this equation. So we're going to plug in lambda 1 equals to 4. And that gives us minus 3, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. And We'll do our row operations, so we'll augment it with the zero vector and solve for this guy. So I'm going to do two row operations at once. I'm going to do uh, minus one third times row one, and I'm also going to do minus row two plus row three, and that gives us one zero zero. And remember when I said these eigenvalue problems, you'll always end up with a row of zeros, the bottom row. In fact, 
If you don't, you did something wrong. It's because these have infinite solutions. So we're free to choose. So if we write down what those equations are, it would be like v1 is equal to 0, v2 is equal to minus v3, and v3 is free. So in this case, we'll choose v3 equals to 1. And so then, if we choose v3 equals to 1, we have v1 equals to 0, v2 equals to minus 1, v3 is equal to 1. So then the vector v that corresponds to lambda 1 is 0, minus 1, 1. Yeah. Well, it's just the nature of, it's just the nature of this matrix. This system of equations is, so, is the matrix is so-called rank deficient. Or, you know, another way, way of saying that is that there are infinite solutions that satisfy and so that's where that sort of row of zeros always comes in. And that, what that means is that we can just choose it to be anything. So we can choose this one to be anything, and then we just have to fill in the rest. Just sort of backfill, right? So we, V2 can't be anything. V, V2 has to be negative V3, right? But V3 could be anything. So we could choose it to be 1 or 2 or 3 or a half or whatever. And, and then as long as we backfill correctly, we're going to get the right answer. This is just a direction, right? And that's actually the point is, uh, you know, this, this is just a, just a direction. And so we don't care about, we only care about the way the vector is pointing, not how long the vector is, if you will, right? And so, in fact, what I was just going to, the next thing I was going to do is say it's often convenient to just normalize this and make it a unit vector, okay? So if I want to normalize this, what do I multiply by? If I want to make this a unit vector, you know, one over the magnitude of the vector, the magnitude of the vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the entries, right? So one squared plus two squared, one squared plus minus one squared, is 2 squared, take the square root of that, is 1 over the square root of 2. All right. Anybody know what, like, decimal-wise, what 1 over the square root of 2 evaluates to? Like, like 0 0.707 something. So when you work these in MATLAB, or, you know, your favorite computing language, but particularly MATLAB, will automatically normalize these. And so let's look at that. So so we have the uh, matrix S, it's 1, 0, 0. 0, 3, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 3. So, anybody know what the command in MATLAB is to solve an eigenvalue problem? EI and what? EIG, EIG, S. And so there's lambda. Lambda is a matrix of the eigenvalues, right? MATLAB orders them differently than what the convention we'll use, right? So we, I said we'll always order them with the greatest one for, as the first one. That doesn't really matter. However, they still correspond to the columns of the, the Q vector. The Q matrix still corresponds to the columns, right? So in, we solved this one by hand, right? Lambda equals to 4, and we plugged it back in, and we got this, right? 0 minus 1, 1 times 1 over the square root of 2. And so we got the exact same answer that MATLAB got. 
And then, but MATLAB, of course, gives us the other ones quicker, right? And again, uh, there is there is another useful reason to uh, make these unit vectors. So, in other words, divide each. If you divide each column of the, each eigenvector, you know, each principal direction, divide it by its magnitude, such as you get a unit vector matrix like this. The the nice, convenient thing about that is that for um, that matrix is is said to be unitary. And the nice feature of a unitary matrix is that its its inverse is its transpose. So, in other words. If I if I look at what the inverse of Q is, it's also um, the transpose of Q, which in MATLAB transpose is a tick mark, right? Right. So Q transpose is equal to Q inverse, and of course it's much easier to take a transpose than it is to take an inverse. Right? Take a transpose, you just flip the rows and columns. So then. Um, if we write if we write Q transpose times S times Q, um, oh. so if we Q transpose times S times Q, we get back the eigenvalues, the principal directions. We've di we've diagonalized the matrix. So it works. So there's just the answers of what we did. In this case, I didn't, um, I didn't uh, normalize for it. But it doesn't matter. It's the direction we care about, not the, not the magnitude.